Vukile is the first on the list. A well-established REIT has been around since I think about the 2000s and probably pieces of it have been around longer. It's refocusing under CEO Lawrence Rapp on retail shopping centers and it's got a market capitalization of 13.5 billion rand. The yield historically, as far as I can tell, is around 8.5%. And of course, Grant, you could perhaps tell us if there's anything that's going to change with regard to that yield. But give us an overview of the portfolio, the management team, and why you selected this one for us to talk about. I think you've summed up quite nicely. Uh, the portfolio has been transitioning um, quite a bit the last five years. Um, mm. So I think they, they were quite smart and they started noticing that the industrial space and the office space will come under pressure yeah. with slower uh, GDP growth. Um, and started focusing more on becoming a retail REIT. Um, so owning not just super regional shopping centers, um, so some of the smaller regional shopping centers with a decent size um, catchment area. Yeah. And what's quite interesting uh, is they are starting to follow the strategy of some of these larger uh, property companies, so the likes of a resilient. So locally, uh, we've mentioned it, GDP is quite slow, it's a tough trading environment, and they're starting to focus um, on the UK property market. And yes. just yesterday, um, they announced that they're entering the Spanish um, property market. That's interesting. So they've taken a stake, like an 80-90% stake in something called Castellana Properties. But what is that? I mean, as far as you can tell, what kind of properties do they own in Spain? So it's quite difficult. <laughs> I don't have... Uh, Spain's a big economy. <laughs> it is, uh, but I think it will be uh, more focused on uh, your retail. I think that's where um, their knowledge lies and that's yeah. where the expertise lies. So I think some of these um, assets that they are acquiring in Spain uh, will be redeveloped into retail. Yeah, because I assume, you know, Spain is a well-developed economy, but there's always niche opportunities. Let's just talk about uh, that swap that they did with Synergy. So what they did with Synergy is that they took some of their own industrial commercial properties and mm -hmm. swapped those with Synergy in order to get more access to retail properties, giving them more stuff. They've also been buying centers like Pinecrest and some stake in the thing in Springs. They own 50% of the East Rand Mall. That's, right. That's probably their flagship property. Uh, the other half, I think, belongs to Redefine or one of those other big right. property groups. So, I mean, they really are zeroing in on these sorts of places. Dobsonville, Soweto, that kind of thing. They've got low gearing, only 23%. That sounds like a plus as well. It definitely is a plus. Um, so you don't want to be uh, overly geared, uh, mm. especially in these times uh, where it would be quite difficult to achieve your distribution growth. Yeah. So. Um, Having the capacity uh, to increase on your balance sheet is yeah. good uh, for a fund like for Kile looking at expanding into the retail sector. Let's look at the share chart because that will tell you over five years how the interest rate cycle has moved around in this country and also perhaps how the market is responding to their development activities. Uh, as Grant said earlier, results out yesterday looks pretty good. So how are you feeling about this one? You're going to go hot or not? I'm not going to go hot. Not? Um, not After hot. all that? After all that, it was a good discussion. <laughs> Uh, but I guess we just got to see how these uh, offshore um, assets that they're acquiring uh, okay. will perform. I think you'll see your distribution growth of seven and a half, eight percent. But in that's the historically what they've delivered. Yeah. Yeah. But in the absence of any uh, major acquisitions, let me just be clear. So uh, when you say the p the stock is hot, you mean that you're and you're, you're implying that it's not. You're concerned that there could be a slight downward correction in the share price, which could be a function of A, you know, some sort of realization about the business model, but B, also the trend with regard to interest rates and what's going to happen next. Where are we in that? What do you think is going to happen next with interest rates going up, going down, sovereign debt rating, all of that stuff? So I think the biggest threat to interest rates at the moment uh, is, of course, Moody's. Um, yeah. And we'll see uh, what they have to say and whether or not they downgrade us by the two notches. Yeah. I think very reassuring yesterday was the low CPI numbers mm. uh, that we saw. Mm. Um, so I think that's a, point. a plus. Uh, but given the political uncertainty, I think the Saab is not likely to cut unless we see a tremendous um, downtrend in CPI. Yeah, okay. So we're going to go not hot on that one. Just a slight timing-related caution there. Okay, okay good.